In today's video, we're gonna shed some light and tell the story of a forgotten 3D software. A software that used to compete with the best 3D packages years ago, then quickly lost most of its users, shrunk down, and became forgotten. So it's time to talk about the complicated sad story of the rise and fall of Moto, and how Blender was the last nail in its coffin. After going through many forums, subreddits, and YouTube videos, I was frankly saddened and this was for two main reasons. One, most of these through the artists don't even know that Moto exists. And secondly, the remnant users or those that still to this day appreciate Moto and hope that one day it comes back, these guys exist in small numbers. And to understand why Moto no longer has a presence in today's market, we will have to go back in time and go way back to the roots of Moto. The year is 1988. A tech company named NewTek launched Lightwave 3D, a revolutionary software used for rendering 3D imagery that included a fast rendering engine that supported advanced features considering that this was more than 30 years ago. Features such as realistic reflections, radiosity, caustics, and render nodes. It also offered support for both polygon modeling and subdivision services, in addition to animation components. To put things into perspective, Lightwave 3D grew to become a behemoth of 3D back in the day. It was used in many feature films and TV series such as Star Trek, Titanic, and many more. Now fast forward to 2001. A fuzzy internal dispute took place at NewTek. A dispute between the management seniors and key developers of Lightwave 3D. They disagreed regarding the notion for a complete rewrite of Lightwave's workflow and technology. Core 3D developers of the staff had a larger, bigger, and better vision for the software, and others wanted to sustain and maintain the existing one. And this generated frustration, which later led New Tech Vice President to resign from his position alongside other Lightwave 3D developers and other programming team members. And these people went on to pursue what they couldn't do before, and they created a company called Luxology. After three years of development and at an annual conference of computer graphics called Seagraph, which I'm sure you are familiar with, Luxology showcased their first long-awaited product, called Moto. A few months later, Moto was finally released, and ever since its release, things escalated really quickly in the favor of Luxology as their software got widely embraced by the entire industry, whether it be movies, video games, or general CG industries. Moto instantly got the attention and love it deserved for being made with passion and personal sacrifice by a very talented group of developers and artists. This software was, and actually to this day, still highly precise with its intuitive user interface, which allowed users to perform complex tasks with fewer clicks compared to the other 3D software competing in the marketplace. High-end visual effects and animation studios, such as Pixar, Digital Domain, Industrial Light & Magic, its software, the Embassy Visual Effects, Naked Sky Entertainment, and many more all used Moto at a certain point. Moto was used in the production of many feature films and TV shows, and in 2006 won the Apple Design Awards for Best Use of Mac OS X Graphics, and also got the title Best 3D Animation Software from the Mac User Magazine. In January 2007, Moto won the Game Developer Frontline Award for Best Art Tool. And this goes to show how big and successful Moto was. Now, you might be wondering how such a successful software is neglected and kind of forgotten. Well, to answer this question, we have to go forward to 2010, when a deal was struck. The Foundry, a UK-based software company that specializes in digital visual effects, acquired the passion-driven company Luxology. One might expect that Moto would only get exponentially bigger after being acquired by such a big studio that offers a whole suite of 3D software such as Nuke, Mari, Katana, and so on. But in reality, ever since then, Moto lost most of its user base, and this is due to many reasons, 
but mainly due to technical ones. Performance is the most important aspect for any 3D package, and Moto started showing weakness and deficiency in this department. Users started stacking requests and complaints to Moto's support team about having numerous random crashes and low performance issues. In addition to slow scene loadings and laggy viewport performance, whenever working with large complex scenes that have a high number of polygons and textures, you might say this is just normal and to be expected. But this actually leads us to the most important reason why Moto lost its popularity, which is competition. The Foundry included Moto in its family of software with the aim to create a captivating closed suite of programs, like what Adobe does. But other developers had a different approach to their productions, such as Maya, 3ds Max, and Cinema 4D. These packages had so much to offer and maximized their output in all different stages of the 3D pipeline, whether it be 3D modeling, animation, lighting, UV mapping, texturing, or VFX and dynamics. Moto was mainly specialized in modeling, and it is still considered till this day one of the most intuitive, fast, and flexible software when it comes to that. But sadly, it never got the treatment other software had in the market. Moto without a doubt had the slowest pace of updates and actual development compared to the other 3D packages. Soon after, 3D artists started noticing that other packages are having major updates which made Moto users unhappy and unsure about shifting to other programs. And this is what I personally admire the most about Moto. Even though it gave artists a whole lot of reasons why to switch to other software, and this is the case for more than a decade, it still has a very loyal user base of 3D artists, but they are really few. 3D artists kept holding on to it because it simply still has the best and most intuitive user experience, especially when it comes to modeling. In 2019, one particular software that simply took the attention of every 3D artist with a game-changing update, which was Blender 2.8. Blender 2.8 was a key factor in Moto's declining popularity. The 2-point update was a significant event for all 3D artists, especially to those doubtful Moto users, and this is the case for many reasons. Blender's major update introduced several improvements to the modeling tools, including new multi-object editing system, better boolean operations, improved mass selection and manipulation tools, and with this, Moto started losing its value compared to Blender, in addition to having EV a real-time GPU-powered rendering engine, and also improved the performance of 3D viewport with faster navigation and more responsive tools. This allowed users to work with larger and more complex scenes without experiencing a lot of lags and slowdowns. This actually addressed most of Moto users' base complaints. And the best part is, this was all for free compared to Moto's subscription system and an answered maintenance fees. While all 3D packages kept growing and developing their user base by modernizing their user interface, improving their tools, fixing bugs, and featuring spectacular updates, Moto was left behind, stuck with the same user interface that was once considered one of the best, with the same bugs and same performance, and this led to a significant shift, especially in its user base, which is actually dwindling over the years. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. You can also subscribe to this channel because it is free. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.